And it occurred to me at that moment of that phone call, when this guy made his comment, that he had no access to what I had. I just took for granted everybody knew what I knew. Well, turns out, of course not. That wasn't true. Right. And at that moment, while I was still on the phone with him, there was a manila folder on my desk. I wrote on that folder, consider building a website. <laughs> and that's when my life changed. Because I realized that the public had no access to accurate information. Everything I read in the media, and remember, I was there, so I know what happened, was right. BS. It was just completely made up nonsense. Yeah. Or it's so erroneous as to be useless. <laughs> and so I felt compelled to try and set the record straight and create a, a, a website where people could come and get honest information without any spin in any direction. If you've seen the website recently, you'll see that not only did I attack Darla Shelley, who is anti-Shroud, yeah. I attacked Barbara Frail, who's pro-Shroud, because she was spouting more nonsense that's been proven wrong that's a... Uh, 12, 13 years ago. <laughs> that wow. Barbara Frail, those inscriptions that she claims, they were proven totally wrong. They make hmm. no sense. You know, there are certain letters of the English alphabet that you would never find in the same word together. They just, you know, Q-M-L-D. Those letters would never, right. you'd never find those in a word in the English language. Right, yeah. And that's the problem with the inscriptions. They were in Greek, and they, and, and the structure of the words if you read Guskin's article, which I uh, referenced in my latest little editorial, yeah. just read what he said. I mean, it, it makes no sense. They would never put those letters together. There were no words that, that <laughs> could be made that way. And so somebody has taken little shapes and markings on the shroud, enhanced them, manipulated them, uh, analyzed them, if you want to call it that, but manipulated them is the best word. Yeah. And all of a sudden they see these little shapes and they start connecting the dots and making them into letters. And if you read Barbara Frail's last thing, they had to interpolate letters into words to make words and stuff. <laughs> hey, that's not how science works. <laughs> you don't make it up just because it'll fit. <laughs> no. They have all no. kinds of fun stuff going on, don't they? Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, wow. I'm obligated to be honest. Yeah. My role is to try and bring some sanity without the emotion, to the facts. And then what those facts mean is up to the individual to decide. I don't tell somebody what to believe. Yeah. But I'm a Jew. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Messianic Jew. Uh, yeah. I have no horse in this race. Right. My only uh, motivator is that the public deserves to know the truth. And they're not getting it from the media. Not when it comes to this subject. Not when you go to Wiki, which is the most ludicrous concept I've ever heard. <laughs> the stupid Wikipedia crap. Pardon me. <laughs> but, you know, look, it might be good if you want to know how to, you know, uh, crack an egg. You can go to Wiki right, and yeah. teach you that. But when you deal with anything controversial like the Shroud, always got to buy us. Go in there and change it every day. Oh, yeah. And if an expert goes in and makes one statement, then some schmuck who doesn't like the Shroud comes along and makes up some other statements. Exactly, yeah. So that's not a reference. Right. That's a, that's a blog. Yeah. Where, where people put their opinions. But to use that as a reference, as so many people do now, is, especially when it comes to the shroud, that's just, you know, that you might as well just yeah. stick your head in the, in the commode. You're yeah, right. About the same quality <laughs> of information. So, yeah. you know, my, my concern was to build a website where I could compile the information and not voice my opinion very frequently. Look, this is the most editorials I've written in one year in the history of the website, two. Yeah. I rarely do editorials because I try and keep the website free of my personal opinions. Yeah. There are times when I'm obligated, like I was under these circumstances because of all the ridiculous media coverage, yeah. is to quell the fears of the viewers and let them know that, hey, relax, this isn't science. This is yeah. media hype. Gotcha. So I felt compelled to do editorials, but I don't like to do that because it's not the Barry Schwartz website, it's the Shroud of Turin website. Right. <laughs> so, so now you, sta you started the website when? Uh, I went online January 21st, 1996. Gotcha, okay. Coming up on its 14th anniversary. All right. Very nice. So now, yeah. now you you examined the shroud in 1978, right? Correct. Now, who did you examine it with? You had. Uh, I was a member of the Shroud of Turin Research Project, STERP. Okay. 
I was a member of the STIRP team, which is the only scientific team in, in history to have been given permission to examine the shroud hmm. and perform an in-depth examination of the cloth. Yeah. It's never been done before, and it wasn't done. It hasn't been done since. No other science has ever been allowed. So the bulk of the peer-reviewed scientific uh, information about the shroud that resides in the peer-reviewed literature came from our team. Hmm. Wow. That's the real deal. Everything else commercial book right TV documentary if it's a website there's no standards of accuracy or, or uh, scientific accuracy particularly right. in any of those media outlets including websites they can, you can say anything you want on a website or in a book or in a TV show you can yeah. say whatever you want but in a peer reviewed journal when you submitted an article to a peer reviewed journal it goes through a panel review of right. experts in the same field and they evaluate it, they question you, they may even re try and repeat some of your experiments, because remember, repeatability is part of the scientific method. Exactly. And so, all of our work withstood the scrutiny of peer review and is in peer hmm. reviewed journals. And that is where the real facts about the Shroud of Turin reside. The problem is, who reads peer reviewed journals? Nobody. Yeah, right, exactly. And that's why I built the website so that I could collect as much of that material as the copyright law allows me and, yeah. uh, and get permission for as much as I can and provide a resource of information. So if you're studying the shroud, you can come there and know that the information's been pretty thoroughly vetted, that, that it's not just somebody's personal opinion. Yeah. And if it is a personal opinion, then it's listed as such. Right. So that it's clearly marked, you know, when I write an editorial, I put the word editorial in the headline. Right. Yeah. Okay, to make it very clear, and I put my name below it. So this is Barry Schwartz's opinion. Right. I try not to do that very often, but in this, these last two cases, I was compelled to do it, and I didn't want to have to do any more of it after Garla Shelley, but when Frail came out basing her stuff on the Marion and Courage inscriptions that were debunked in the 90s, I could not sit still and be quiet even though I didn't want to write another editorial two in a row like that. Yeah. But I felt compelled, and I felt that if I don't, then the skeptics are going to look at me and say, see that Schwartz, he claims to be fair, but when bogus information comes out that's pro-authenticity, he doesn't mention that. He doesn't criticize that. Right. So I was obligated to be honest about it and tell people, and look, I have nothing against Barbara Frail or Luigi Garlo Shelley. As a matter yeah. of fact, my friend Tibo Heimberger contacted Garlo Shelley and worked with him to write the article which debunked Garla Shelley. And that I published the week or mm. two after. Did you see that article? No, I didn't. Well, it's on It's on the thing. If you just go yeah. where, you know, to the page, the late-breaking news page there, and you'll, you'll find it. There's an article from Tebow Heimberger who discussed everything with Garla Shelley yeah. and then analyzed it. There's a, It's a PDF with photomicrographs, comparative analysis between the two. Okay. It's dramatically different than the shroud. It's not anything like what the shroud looks like. Yeah. So there you have hmm. it. So, you know, uh, it's not exactly what my intention was, uh, you know, to interject my own personal opinion. Right. Place. But I have come to a point now with the website where people rely on me for sort of an honest evaluation of things. Right. Awesome responsibility, you know? I yeah. Have, tell you, the hardest job I've had in my whole life is being the editor and publisher of shroud.com. <laughs> Well, I'm wow. often caught in, in intellectual uh, disagreements between yeah. personal friends of mine. Yeah. And, and I can generally tell when I've been fair in mediating a, a, a uh, conflict between two Shroud guys uh, is that usually at the end of that process, when both parties are pissed at me, I know that I must have done a fair job of right. mediating because neither were satisfied. Right, exactly. And so for me... Um, as much as I didn't want to be in that position, that's the position I'm in. I, I, you know, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really intend any of this. This is just how it came out. Right. Ah, what can I tell you? <laughs> you're, you're in Michigan? Yes, I am. Yep. How cold is it up there today? Uh, we had a little bit of snow, but it's not accumulating on the ground, so... Uh, I've got about three inches from, la from yesterday and last night. It was uh, three below here at my house. Oh, my... My son lives over in uh, Alma, which is at uh, 10, 5, 10,500. Yeah. And he got up this morning with 17 below zero. Oh. We, we had a bit of a cold spell. 
I see. <laughs> the sun, is, sun is out, and it's all the way up to 21 degrees now. Wow. Yeah, so uh, so I can relate to Michigan. I'm from Pennsylvania anyway. So oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah I know some people my, from there. My, my uh, home state. That's where I was born and raised. Gotcha. So snow is no big deal. But my house is at 8,300 feet. Oh, wow. But it gets cold. <laughs> Rocky Mountain High, I guess that's what it, you would say. <laughs>